consistency is the key so it it, it actually doesn't matter uh, how many hours you are able to put in one day it's not like putting 10 or 12 hours for one month and then not studying for the next two months it's the consistency and the baby steps that you need to take uh, throughout the course of your preparation because uh, having a major victory something that will ultimately change your life from a rags to riches kind of uh, success story may not be everyone's cup of tea so we have to enjoy the process and uh, take those baby steps to success is what matters hi everyone uh, good evening my name is anandel and today i have with me uh, vikram joshi he's got selected in sebi examination for the year 2020 and he has a very very interesting story to tell i think aspirants who are working simultaneously number one aspirants who have been studying for a long time and have gone through a lot of challenges aspirants who feel that they're not getting anywhere because of the mistakes that either they are making or because of their bad luck it might be anything he has gone through all of these uh, in in the last 4 5 years uh, as per the discussion that we had and i think it's going to be inspiring and also will bring a lot of clarity to all of you as to what to do in such a situation if you are in it at present okay so welcome vikram thanks a lot for joining me thank you sir i'm glad to be here so uh, firstly let's tell all the students uh, a little bit about your life story since graduation what have you gone through and how did you cope up with those challenges so i graduated in the year 2016 uh, from a mechanical engineering btech degree um, and uh, since my seventh semester i've been preparing for the upsc exam so my experience with government exams goes for the past 6 uh, 6 and 1/2 years which is a uh, mind numbingly huge amount of time so uh, for the first 3 three, 3 uh, th- years i was totally focused upon upsc i did not give any other exam any sort of attention because i thought that single minded devotion to one cause is what gives results but when that didn't uh, yield a desired result and i also had uh, some immediate uh, financial issues to take care of so i decided i would just get some sort of a job and prepare simultaneously and devote my time to other exams so i got a job in a private company and then i cleared a few exams and then i joined the state bank of india in uh, february 2020 and uh, uh, just immediately the next day after uh, joining i came to know that i cleared one more exam and i joined employee state insurance corporation 5 months later in the in july 2020 and since then uh, i've been working there and currently also i'm an employee of esic and i've been uh, in the sabi journey for the past 1 1 and 1/2 years at least hmm. so uh, there is some similarity in 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 the journey that we have gone through that is what i'm hearing it for the second time and i can feel that because i remember uh, while i was preparing i had spent almost 4 4 and 1/2 years in upsc and i was going nowhere uh, and uh, that is when i just gave sbi and i got selected and the financial situation Uh, back at my place was also very very bad, and uh, I decided let's just do it. Let's just, you know, my friends, uh, people I knew, not exactly my friends. People just I I just knew they thought that I am very capable. I am so smart and all that. And when they heard I am working in SBI, they were like, "Why are you working in a bank? You should not be doing that." So, <laughs> so but it did not matter because I was at the bottom of. Uh, you know life at that moment so i just thought i'll, I'll take it and i think uh, for all the students here he got selected in sbi in the clerical cadre and upsc wale jo yahan students baithe honge they would relate to it after having prepared for upsc going and working in clerical cadre you don't want to do it your ego your parents your family the social stigma attached to it will not allow it okay so uh, it's it's like taking a step back and uh, i don't know what do what do what do we call it but it's not acceptable socially for a lot of people so i think that's that's something very good that you did not only good i think that's something that very very brave that you did at that point of time because that probably brought to you to your uh, knees and made you realize that okay now i cannot go any uh, you know down any further so <laughs> so i, I just have one way to go and that is go up 
तो एंड सो यू स्टार्टेड प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर यूपीएससी डिड नॉट गेट सिलेक्टेड एंड यू स्टार्टेड वर्किंग इन एसबीआई इन द क्लेरिकल कैडर एंड देन इन ईएसआईसी इन द क्लेरिकल कैडर सो दैट इज वन मैसेज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मैसेज यू प्रिपेयर्ड साइमल्टेनियसली यू टोल्ड मी विद योर जॉब सो दैट इज अनदर एरिया दैट आई थिंक अ लॉट ऑफ वर्किंग स्टूडेंट्स वुड वांट टू नो अबाउट हाउ डिड यू मैनेज दैट so uh, the advantage of any government exam is that the uh, uh, i mean government post government job is that working hours are pretty fixed and that there are in night shift there is uh, less chance of having work on saturdays mm-hmm. so that is something which greatly helped and i uh, always uh, had a strong intention to um, not work in the clerical cadre in the long term i uh, always had in mind that uh, uh, since being from a upsc background the least that i could settle for would be a regulatory body post in the long term so mm-hmm. uh, what i could manage was um, one hour of study in the morning and three to four hours of study uh, in the evening after uh, coming back home by 6:30 or 7 mm-hmm. and i maintain the consistency in the uh, long run i think that's what helped me and also uh, the fact that on weekends we won't have work and i i can devote more number of hours on weekends mm-hmm. so that certainly took a toll on my social life Hmm. but i felt that it all worked out for a good hmm. so i think that consistency was the key there that worked hmm. uh for all the aspirants uh, because you have been a working aspirant hmm. uh along with consistency so th- th- let me reframe this the, the the problem or the mistake that a lot of students make is while they working is that they try to blame their working hours or working pressure ki nahi ho pa raha hai you not able to take out enough time what do you feel is it only because you were in the clerical cadre and you had that privilege of time let's say you had been in the in the you know officer cadre mm-hmm. and, and you had more working hours you would get back home let's say at 9 o'clock would you how would you have managed that kind of a situation so in such a case maybe i would have uh, prepared in a more pinpointed way mm-hmm. um, because uh, i work in a clerical cadre what the advantage was that i could uh, complete the syllabus from end to end mm. so maybe i would not have done that maybe i would have talked to other candidates and coordinated and studied the areas which are more likely to be asked mm. so um, i feel that that is one ad- advantage that i got uh, and also the fact that during lockdowns we had alternate days of work mm. uh, so that had a uh, huge advantage during the preparation phase Mm. but again ironically what also happened was slightly a few days before the phase 2 um, we had a minor reshuffle in our branch and one person was shifted out to another branch so the workload had to be borne by the rest of us mm. so uh, these kind of unexpected things do happen in government exams and government jobs mm. so what i would su- suggest is just uh, be focused on your goal whatever it takes i mean you might have to uh, slightly modify your sleep schedule or whatever uh, social life or uh, entertainment that uh, you are into but uh, the uh, the ultimate goal should be very clear that's what will always help the long term i think very important i think that's very important to reiterate again and again especially to all the working students out there that uh, you know you will always have challenges and problems and excuses not to study but uh, there is only one way out and that is to study complete the syllabus and just get through you also talked about the number of times that you revised the syllabus i think that was one thing that is very important so by when did you complete the syllabus and how many times did you revise it so i could complete my syllabus uh, by october november 2020 so that was a good 3 4 months before the prelims was held mm-hmm. uh, and i uh, finished my uh, multiple revisions i think i revised about 10 to 12 times by phase 1 and after that i just focused on uh, phase 2 mm. so there was uh, a moment where i thought that i should cover the peripheral areas also that were asked in the uh, paper 2 of phase 1 mm. uh, but uh, i took a leap of faith i thought that uh, ivps may not conduct such uh, may not make such a huge blunder once again and they might stick to the syllabus mm. so thankfully it paid out and in phase 2 of um, the paper 2 of phase 2 they strictly stuck to the syllabus and it was one of the best quality papers that was ever uh, conducted by ibps uh, did you not get demotivated ki yaar exam nahi ho raha hai it's been so long uh, did you not stop studying at that point point of time 
because it it got it got delayed multiple times that's true so uh, i feel that the fact that the exam was delayed in the uh, was one of the main reasons i decided to take a plunge in in the course of preparation so i started my preparation in may may 2020 that's when i had filled the form and the fact that it was getting delayed i mean of course at one point it did feel overwhelming but uh, mostly what i looked at was i looked at it as an opportunity uh, saying that i will have more time to prepare more time to revise to give more mocks hmm. so uh, that's the uh, plus side of the exams constantly being uh, uh, rescheduled right right that makes a lot of sense and that is something that uh, you know uh, every student has to remember that the exam is going to be held so you better get back to work okay uh, last thing and i think one of the most important areas we've talked about your achievements the good things all hunky dory what are the bad things that happened what are the mistakes that you made uh, that resulted in a lower score uh, you know compared to a lot of other aspirants that's the reality so where did you make mistakes and how could you have made sure that you did not you would not repeat those mistakes if you were not selected so uh, i feel that in uh, paper 1 that is in descriptive english of phase 2 i could have scored uh, much more marks because i hardly scored in the 50s and uh, that was uh, really underwhelming for me so i didn't practice as much as i should have and since i came from the upsc background i thought that uh, i would have a good grip upon uh, descriptive english Hmm. and also i was associated with the upsc coaching institute hmm. i used to write a model answer for the aspirants who used to write main test series there so that really helped in drafting hmm. uh, and uh, writing good quality content hmm. so um, I, what i feel is i failed to realize the difference between the two exams there uh, i mean upsc is totally different and the descriptive english in any ivps exam is totally different than that uh, so that is the most important thing because of which i did not practice much and uh, also what i feel is the um, based on the ibps po 2021 notification i realized that the nature of the the the, te- the technique in which the correction is done for descriptive english is slightly different so they totally do it end to end uh, on a computerized basis there is no manual intervention at all they have clearly mentioned in this year's ibps po notification so in such cases what happens is the content is not given much importance uh, what is mostly looked at is the si- very simple aspects a, a comma or a hyphen and uh, basic spelling mistakes so i feel that uh, when i was giving too much importance to the content i failed to give much importance to the grammar the syntax and the spellings uh, and al- also uh, time since one uh, since the fact that i was not able to practice much before the exam i was not able to manage time that well i covered all the areas i, I was able to answer all the questions in rc pre uh, and uh, say but i feel that the, there wasn't enough time to check at the end mm-hmm. and there were some technical errors i mean i uh, everyone who has written an ipps descriptive exam knows how the interface is it's very unfriendly to the person who is typing and also the the kind of keyboard that we get in the exam hall all these factors do have a role to play so i feel that is one area where i could have uh, scored much more in uh, descriptive english perfect that uh, that makes a lot of sense uh, fortunately a lot of students make the same mistake so it is uh, you know nothing there, there is nothing unique about it but and at the same time there is uh, nothing that cannot be corrected easily so it it's a very simple mistake and i think a lot of us do make this mistake because we are uh, humans are naturally lazy they, they don't want to you know put in that effort even i don't want to put in that effort of writing an essay let's say every other day but i have to because i have to give it to students but as soon as i get an opportunity my i know I, that my brain brain want, wants to get out of it so uh, i think i think we all do this mistake and if if students write regularly this would not happen uh, very well put there okay i think uh, we've talked about majority of the things that uh, we could gather from your experience what is it uh, if you have to give any message to the students what is it that you would want to share with the students anything that the aspirants should know so i would like to cover two aspects first as any topper would say or anyone who has been in the competitive exam Uh, field for a long time would say 
consistency is the key so it it, it actually doesn't matter uh, how many hours you are able to put in one day it's not like putting 10 or 12 hours for one month and then not studying for the next two months it's the consistency and the baby steps that you need to take uh, throughout the course of your preparation because uh, having a major victory something that will ultimately change your life from a rags to riches kind of uh, success story may not be everyone's cup of tea so we have to enjoy the process and uh, take those baby steps to success is what matters and the second aspect which many doctors may not tell is what i feel is no government exam uh, selection procedure is completely 100% perfect i mean i'm not questioning the integrity or uh, the the way in which the exam is conducted but there are many uh, shortcomings in the way certain exams are conducted for example i just mentioned how the ibps uh, descriptive english is checked and that is a huge drawback to the people who have decent writing skills when only certain and only very fundamental english is checked hmm. and also in the interview process so uh, it depends on a lot of things it depends on perception and uh, what kind of questions are uh, uh, are asked hmm. so what i would say is uh, don't uh, trust the examination process so blindly you have to understand these nuances and you have to work along with them hmm. and uh, Uh, what aspirants can do in such cases is try to score as much as possible in the mcq section wherever it is counted so that in the more subjective areas like descriptive english or in interview uh, even if you don't score very high marks still you can get through hmm. so these are the uh, two aspects that i wanted to cover that's all i think that's very good no examination is perfect so we have to focus on areas that are under our control much more than the other areas that are probably not mm-hmm. even i have seen that uh, you know i ask uh, we take mock interviews so if i get irritated from a student and i feel that he is not probably well read then i ask him more difficult questions and then uh, you know just to prove my point that he is not very well read and then i would give him less marks so that is how humans work this is basic human error that we get it, we, we, we get into this this trap every every other day so i think uh, you cannot completely rely on this uh, very well very well put thanks a lot vikram i think it was very nice talking to you and uh, the clarity in your thought and the journey that you have had in the past 6 7 years the ups and downs that you have seen i think uh, they finally paid off and uh, now you're going to love working in sebi it's a beautiful organization uh, and the financial sector is growing so fast and it's going to go up on only in the next 2 uh, 3 decades so you're going to have a lovely time All the best. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me here. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Bye.